Welcome all Amino Kart fans to the illustrious site of the furry track. Here in the Kenseth Cup, we race today at the Style Circuit, the one and only. Lots of foxes, lots of dogs, lots of other furries sitting around the track, and they're just here in abundance and are going to watch the Amino Kart action alongside you guys today at home. How's it going, everybody? As always, I am Cater Johns, as you can see right around here. Now, this is really interesting. We are on race three, the furry track. Now, a lot of these drivers entered in this race. It was not by choice uh, on their end. It was the team captain's choice, and that is very evident, as you will see in the lineups coming up. But there's not a single team captain entered in this race, and I do think that might have uh, that might be in part of the furry track being here today. So... They've avoided the furry track, and they've sent some of their other drivers to race here today. And the course schedule, as you see, JD Speedway and Thago Figure 8. Two very dangerous tracks we've learned or come to find out. But now we are at the furry track, the style circuit. We'll see how things shake out today. But here are the standings so far in the Kenseth Cup heading into the day. The Smart Cart's on top after their win in the Fago Figure 8. The Preposterous Pigeons are tied, though. They've been consistent, and they've been tied at top for both races so far in this cup. Then the Krispy Creamers, who won JD Speedway, are currently in third. So let's head over and check out the starting grid. Here we are at the Style Circuit, and let's review this starting grid. As you see way back in the pack, the Epic Gamers have not had a good outing so far, but Devin Askin will try to sport the team in the 8th starting spot today. Sporting the team in 7th place for the Robust Aces, it is Roberto Crown Jr. in the Great Clips car. What kind of hay can they make up today? I don't even know what that means, sorry. Uh, Ethan Farley starts 6th in that Geico 94 machine. Another team off to a little bit of a slow start, the Explosive Emus there. See if they can gain traction today. Then it's the Krispy Creamers number 24 Napa Auto Parts machine of Jared Holmes. He's always insane, intense, and really will do anything to win a race. Ryan Ricci will start in the number 32 car for uh, for the Sexy Bean Farts there in fourth place on row two. Next to him on row two is the number 48, say it with me, Anthony Bartholomew Sassoon the third junior. He's starting third. In the, auto motor, in the auto owner's car. Sorry, I can't talk. Caleb Marinelli is on the front row after the Volcanic Ass's second place finish last week. And then alongside him is your pole sitter at his home track, Ian Stiles, for the Smart Carts. How will they do? He's got a lot of expectations weighing on his shoulders with it being the style circuit. Then here are some key track features for today. We have a bunch of scattered sticky pink stuff everywhere. No one knows exactly what it is, but we do know one thing. Stay out of that sticky pink stuff or you will be respawned to the easy access pits. Then we have split paths caused by these sticky pink stuffs on the track. So you have very, you have a lot of alternatives. You can go left through the middle, go right and take that boost panel right there. Lots of options. And the easy access pits location is not in the most ideal spot as usual. It is just out of that... Uh, multi-path area so we'll see how the drivers handle that and merge back onto the track And the drivers are off for the furry race at the Styles Circuit. Already been in contact with Styles and Marinelli. Now Marinelli gets shoved around into the sticky pink stuff. He will get respond to the pit. Now the 42 of Styles goes around. He should be able to recover though. It's going to be a long road ahead though. Right now it's Sassoon the third junior. Jared Holmes in second uses the boost panel, tries to gain any ground he can. Motor sabotage obtained by the eight of Marinelli. We'll see who that ends up nabbing. Side by side, that's tight, and that's going to bite Ethan Farley right there. He's going to get respawned as well. Oh, lots of contact for third place. Crown Jr. into the pink stuff. Oh, Lord. Lots of drivers getting stuck early on. Oh, Ethan Farley throws up right in front of the leaders. 
Sassoon the third junior and Jared Holmes are going to be sent back to the pits after that one. Move Devin Askham to the lead as the rewind time is picked up by the 29. Ricci spins as he went over the boost panel and lost control. Three laps to go. Oh, the Furries are moving onto the track. That has eliminated one of the split path options there. And now they have to go around it. Farley gets an idol. Oh, no! Big collision with Roberto Crown Jr. and Ethan Farley. But the rewind time will get used by the 29 to undo that. Oh, no! Oh, that was that was a, just as bad as the result for the 29. But now the battle is for the lead with the white flag out in the air. They bang, they touch. Askham gets dumped by Marinelli. We have more furries getting onto the track. Now he spins. They run into each other. They're on top of each other. Oh my goodness. Ryan Ricci squeaks by for the lead. And Ryan Ricci runs over a furry. Devin Askham wins. And a furry gets killed by Ethan Farley. What in the world did we just watch? We have furries dead on the track at Styles Circuit as they got hungry, and attacked the drivers later on. Well, let's take a look at our very girthy highlight reel that we're about to watch here. So, Styles and Marinelli going for it early. They get sent wide, and Marinelli gets dumped by Ryan Ricci, it looks like, as Marinelli tried to squeeze behind the 42. Then, just instantly after, Styles gets dumped by the 29 of Crown Jr., but that's just the beginning of the action. They were side by side here on lap three, I think it was. Farley, just a miserable day, and this is how it all started there, getting stuck in the sticky pink stuff. And then Crown Jr. and Askham get into a beating and banging match. Ends bad for the 29 in the end. And then the motor sabotage, such poor timing for Ethan Farley to be there right in front of the leaders. They could not see, and they run into him at a high speed. Ryan Ricci uses the boost panel right here, loses it, tries to save it. The sticky pink stuff grabs him and he gets stuck. Styles slides it trying to avoid him. Then, Farley and the 29 of Roberto Crown Jr. collide, but Roberto Crown Jr. has an item that he uses, the rewind time, so that gets undone. But then, it really didn't matter because he ends up getting closer to avoiding him, but instead he gets flipped over and a weight shift off the 94's nose. And what a hard hit that was. Then the white flag. The M&M's car is dueling it out for the win. You see Marinelli was not happy with being crowded right there. Gets the one car turned. The furry moves onto the track. Eliminates Marinelli's option there. He has to make a last minute maneuver to go right in Styles' path. He gets obliterated by Jared Holmes. Then the one car has to slow down and wait for these cars to despawn. Ricci, Ryan Ricci gets the break of his lifetime. Gets the lead. And then it's instantly taken from him right here as the furry goes, attacks him, and he runs it over. Ask him, after getting spun at the start of the lap, comes back to win. And Ethan Farley was already a lap down and then gets obliterated by another furry. So, I mean, Farley just a day to forget finishing over one lap down here. And he will finish dead last today. And Ryan Ricci there will get one point on the day after being sent to the pits after what looked like was going to be a win for that 32. Instead, it goes to Devin Askham and the Epic Gamers. They needed a turnaround after such a bad start for them. And then it's Roberto Crown Jr. and Anthony Bartholomew Sassoon the third Jr. Round out your top three. And the 48 dominated a lot of the day up till uh, that first accident that he was involved in. Then the standings, you see in red at 7th and 8th place, those two teams are eliminated, the Sexy Bean Farts and the Explosive Emus, but the other six are in contention and can mathematically win the Kenseth Cup next week at Roden Raceway. But right now, Preposterous Pigeons are on top by four points over the Smart Farts, and the Crispy Creamers, the other winners in the Cup, uh, 16 points there with uh, six points behind the Pigeons. So we'll see how that all shakes out at the Roden Raceway. The track is shaped like a number three for Dale. We'll see you there.